I'm standing on the spar deck, the top deck of USS Constitution. She's the oldest commissioned warship afloat in the world, and she is Old Ironsides, the nickname that she acquired in the War of 1812. USS Constitution had three remarkable battles during the War of 1812. In fact, her first battle occurred just two months after the declaration of war, and war was declared on Great Britain by the United States on June 18, 1812, and on August 19, 1812, about 300 miles off Halifax, Nova Scotia, USS Constitution encountered a HMS Guerriere. It's the first frigate-to-frigate -frigate conflict uh, battle in the War of 1812, where the two vessels are basically the same class, although Guerriere was slightly smaller than Constitution, being a 38-gun warship. Constitution was a 44-gun warship. And also, too, that the United States Navy vessel had won. The United States Navy was a very, very small navy in comparison to the Royal Navy, the largest navy in the world. During that battle with HMS Guerriere, one of the American sailors noticed that some of Guerriere's shot when hitting Constitution's thick oak sides would hit and not actually penetrate, but instead rolled harmlessly off the sides of the ship. And he purportedly yelled out, Huzzay, her sides are made of iron. They didn't say huzzah, they said huzzay 200 years ago. And that's where the nickname Iron Sides comes from. The British public was shocked that Guerriere lost to Constitution, and the United States, where especially in the New England states where the war was unpopular, this became an emotional boost and high for um, citizens of the United States to know that their naval vessels could actually be victorious against the largest navy in the world. Less than six months later, on December 29, 1812, Captain William Bainbridge was now the commanding officer of USS Constitution. And that battle would occur down in the South Atlantic off the coast of Brazil. It was against HMS Java. This would be a much, much longer battle, a battle that was over two and a half hours. And in the end, Captain William Bainbridge of Constitution is victorious. It's not the same, obviously, on the decks of Java. She has had tremendous loss of life. Constitution's next battle would happen a couple of years later. That's because Constitution got blockaded here in Boston Harbor um, off and on between 1813 and 1814. But by the end of 1814, Constitution was able to get out of Boston Harbor. A new captain had been assigned to Constitution. That was Charles Stewart. Um, and he went aboard Constitution, sailed the ship successfully out of the blockaded Boston Harbor, and started looking for British warships. He sailed all the way across the Atlantic. And on February 20th, 1815, he encountered not one, but two British warships, HMS Cyan and HMS Levant. Captain Stewart was able to successfully separate the two vessels. By separating them, each one of those two vessels was considerably smaller than Constitution. And so he captured Cyan first, and not long after, Levant would surrender to USS Constitution. What's the legacy from all of this? One of the biggest legacies that we have here in Boston, of course, is the fact that USS Constitution was saved. And the Navy eventually recognized what this ship was about, what symbol this ship could represent. In fact, in May, May 23rd, 1815, the National Intelligencer, which was a newspaper out of Washington, D.C., published a very short article that began, Let us keep old Ironsides at home. She has become a nation's ship and should be preserved in honorable pomp so that future generations could understand not only what Constitution did, but what the United States Navy did, and the fact that coming out of the War of 1812, the United States was finally recognized truly as a sovereign nation standing on its own, recognized on the world stage.